big on their balance sheet what they're looking for. So that's one way. But like when I started, like finding a seller of paper was like the hardest thing in the world. The fact that we had a, a bit, few big banks, credit unions that were keeping us flush with paper, like people were lining up the door to buy a 103 commercial, like paying a premium for like a 4% rate because of where the five-year treasury was mm-hmm. at, right? So they just look at the spread between the five-year and, and the rate. Um, and now like when I'm reaching out to people, are you active in the market? Yes or no? The I say yes, buyer, seller, everyone's a seller. So I think <laughs> because everyone has too many loans in their books mm-hmm. um, and no one has That's liquidity. Great. So the the buyers and sellers kind of flipped as far as, yeah. you know, supply and demand. <clears throat> so when we're reaching out to, you know, credit unions and banks and we do find someone with liquidity who is still buying, we are super focused on those guys and mm-hmm. making sure we can do everything we can to, you know, supply them with what we need because that is now the, the, ab, the, um, Abnomaly, what is that called? The outlier. Yeah, the outlier, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The outlier <clears throat> is the the bank who's like, Yeah, I'm looking for twenty million dollars of a multifamily deal in these states. So right. um it's difficult to find buyers, but when you do, you have to, you know, really put your focus to them um and kind of do reverse inquiries, right? This is what these guys are buying, like let's go source that paper. Mm-hmm. Um mm. and that way we're always keeping them happy because sometimes we have to turn away sellers. Like we have to. We're like, listen, like we're, we, I would love to help you, but we're not going to be able to move this because there's no market. And if you want par or par and a quarter, like that's, I'm sorry. Like we yeah, have, it's not going to happen. And we're a small company. So like the, the one thing we probably have struggled with at times is taking on every deal that walks into the door. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, we got another seller. We got another seller. Like it was the being like the yes man. You don't want to turn it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, no, Steve. I just got two hundred million dollars of paper. Like this is the best uh, thing ever. And then we look at it and we're like, who's gonna buy this, right? Yeah. So, um, and you know the the C suite. There's <laughs> there's four of us, and you know we really have to be selective now as far as our resources and and mm. what we want to do because we don't want to you know do a bad job for someone or, or not be able to live up to a promise right. um, by saying we can do this and when you can't. So mm-hmm. sometimes you just have to say. I'm sorry, like we're you know we're not going to be able to do this. Yeah, and they appreciate that more times than not. They're like, thank you, like that's good market call. Have you ever had to? Um, have you ever had to like? Because I know there's a lot of people that come to me and be like, hey, can you you want to partner in a deal? Can you raise the money? Um, and now you know I got my hands full, and I'm like, I'm always itching for a new a great deal, a new deal. But now I'm telling, I'm saying no. I'm saying yeah. don't. I can't. Sometimes I'm, you I'm, have to. Uh, I got my hands full. I can't look at deals. And um, my biggest fear is what if I don't close because because uh, it's my fault, right? Mm-hmm. Have you ever had to, have you ever had to like let seller, uh, a seller down on a- More times than I care to admit, for sure. Because <laughs> when, I, when I first started, I was like, I mean, I'm a new guy. I'm, I'm working with the founders. They're in the offices next door. I'm like one of the only guys in the office. Everyone else was remote. So like, for me, coming in at a new company with the three founders next to me, I was like, I need to impress these guys and be able to get everything <laughs> I possibly can. Right. And then everyone I got on the phone before like actually talking to these the founders, I should have been like, can we do this? I was like, yeah, we can do that. Right. Um, and then, you know, three months of phone calls without anyone even sniffing what they were looking for as far as pricing or even putting a bit out there, I had to go back and be like, sorry. Like, right. Or yeah. like, hey, we didn't move this. Like, shit. And then when they have paper that you can move, they're probably not coming to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we yeah. had to learn to be like, hey, like, if this is like this is what you want to sell, like, this is what the market is right now. Like, this is what you can get. And if you have that, like, I'm, I want to be transparent. Vitreous actually means transparent, and <clears throat> I think Greeks, uh, Latin. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're trying to be as transparent as possible. Like, right. Listen, like, this is going to be really tough to move. I'm sorry. Like, this is where the market's going to be. Um, and people do appreciate that in the long run um, more than saying you can and then you can't. <laughs> it, it's like that transparency and the expectation setting is so freaking important. Mm-hmm. I just got off the phone with the seller. That's why I have a, a I have um, bourbon in my hand. Um, <laughs> I just got off the seller uh, off the phone with my attorney, a seller, and her attorney, and she's telling me. All the things that my uh, acquisition manager and my transaction coordinator did wrong, right? And I'm I'm just sitting there, just like, oh my god, and I and I can't go, I can't just blame it on people. It's my at the end of the day, it's my fault, mm-hmm. right? It's my company. So, yeah. um, 
had had you know my acquisition manager set the right expectations, mm-hmm. was transparent, right, um, and and and. and, and, and and just say no to the deal if we weren't able to get, get it, be able to get it done, it wouldn't have cost me $5,000 just now. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so it's tough to say no, though. It's, it's tough to say no, especially when you're a new company. Like, mm-hmm. when yeah. you're a new company and you're, or a new employee at a company, like, the only thing you want to do is like bring Make in, bring in deals, yeah. Yeah. bring in money. You want to like, be the yes man. You, you want to yes help everybody. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Unfortunately, I learned quickly that that's sometimes just not the way to do it because you'll miss opportunities that your attention should should have been because you're trying to move this something something mm-hmm. that's not right. not possible mm-hmm. or, or very unrealistic. And then you know, I, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes I made early on. Was like,